Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, while we're getting set up and having everyone uh, log in, please feel free to write where you're come logging in from in the box below, the chat box. If you're logging in from Facebook, go ahead and you can put in uh, the comment section below where you're logging in from. Hello and welcome, Kevin from Atlanta. Gene calling in from New York. Mara from Pennsylvania. Hi, Mara. Glad to see you. We have Randy and Pat calling in from Indiana. Hi, Di from Toledo, Washington. Good seeing you. And Gabra. Ciao. Ciao, Gabra from Del, Minnesota. And Linda from Ontario. Welcome, Linda. Alex, all the way from Germany. Welcome in, Alex. We've got Lynn from Florida. Glad you're joining us, Lynn. If Jorgen from Ireland. Slancha, Jorgen. Mari from California. Judy from Florida, welcome everyone. If you're just now joining us, please feel free to enter in where you're calling in from uh, in the chat box. Or again, if you're dialing in from Facebook, we'd love to hear from you in the, the comment box below. Please feel free to, to put it in there. Hi, John from Austin. Glad seeing you. We have Tara from Nevada. Send some of your warm weather this way, please. We've got Margaret from Ohio. Hello, Margaret. And Amy from Texas. Welcome, Amy. We'll be getting started here in just a little bit. Roseanne from Saskatchewan. Nice seeing you, Roseanne. Thanks for joining us. We have Pear from Sweden. Hello, Pear. Thanks for joining us. Looks like we have a whole world of people joining in, logging in. This is fantastic. We're glad that you're here with us today. While you're joining, please enjoy some of this uh, beautiful Italian music. I'm holding myself back from having a full dance right now. Hello, Barbara and Chris from South Carolina and Nancy from Massachusetts. Hello. Welcome. On Facebook, we have Lori from Arizona and Cynthia from Texas. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Jennifer Chow from Ohio. And Joanne from Central Pennsylvania. Welcome, Joanne. All right, we are just about to get started here. So I'm so glad that you are all here and joining us today. Uh, we look forward to having a wonderful Travel Talk webinar. So let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are so glad that you're joining us today uh, to talk about my absolute favorite topic, which is food and wine. My name is Josh Henniger, and I am, work on our community and engagement team here at Go Ahead Tours. I'm dialing in uh, live from my home in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So for all of you other Northerners, hello and glad to seeing you here. Uh, if this is your first time joining us on one of our Travel Talk webinars, welcome. And if you have joined us in the past, welcome back. We are so glad to have you here. The structure of our webinars allow our audience to feel comfortable in your home without needing to worry about muting and unmuting yourself um, or having your cameras on. The only people that will be able to share video or audio is our guests of honor today and myself. And while we won't be able to hear you, we do wanna hear from you. So as the presentation continues, please feel free to throw in any questions that you have into the Q&A box located at the bottom or the top of your screen. Or if you're joining us on Facebook, you can put your questions in that comment section right below. Uh, throughout the presentation, uh, we can be stopping for, to answer some questions here and there. But really, ultimately, we will have the, the biggest chunk of our question and answer section at the very end of the, of the presentation. So let's jump into the agenda today. First, what we're going to do is a deep dive into what a food and wine experience looks like on an EF Go Ahead tour. 
And how does that exclusive experience differ from other travel styles that we offer? So uh, it could be in, uh, in Italy or Ireland, maybe Spain or South America. Our food and wine travel style is going to give you a really absolute incredible culinary experience no matter where you are. Then we are going to take a much more narrow focus on the nuances of both Southern and Northern Italy and how you can experience different culinary experiences uh, in those two different destinations and regions. And then finally, we are going to end it, like I said before, with a question and answer session. So you can have all of those burning questions answered uh, live by our, our uh, guests here with us today. So again, please feel free to write those questions in that Q&A box, either at the bottom or top of your screen and on Facebook in the comments section uh, below. So when you're choosing a, to book a go-ahead tour, whether it be a food and wine themed adventure, an African safari, or a classic tour highlighting the iconic sites, you can expect the absolute highest quality experience. The meals that we provide are absolutely authentic and the hotels are hand-picked, safe, and in really uh, centrally located destinations. While our staff uh, works all over the world, we use them to curate the itineraries and the activities so you can really experience any go-ahead tour like a true local. And even if we plan perfectly, we all know that travel is very unpredictable. So when you travel with go-ahead, you have the full support of our team in the office to answer any of those questions that you have uh, ahead of your tour. And even while on tour, we have a 24-hour team here to help uh, answer any of those questions on tour uh, if a situation does arise. But most important of all, you have your tour director. And let me tell you, tour directors are absolutely and undeniably the heartbeat of our tours. They manage the logistics like picking you up from the airport, showing you the major sites and getting you acclimated to the destination. But really they do so much more than that. They are a friendly face, a teacher, a friend, a local. They are the person that you can go to for advice or for recommendations, uh, or simply just to show you the hidden gems of a destination. They are fun and charismatic and absolutely full of information. Uh, if there is even a small snag or a major emergency, they work very hard to problem solve so you don't have to. And in fact, most of the time, you'll probably never even know that a problem has arose. And now uh, we have the pleasure of meeting two of these fantastic tour directors today along with our Vice President of Market and Innovation uh, and Development. Uh, so uh, I, it is with my great pleasure to be introducing you to these three incredible people, Carla and Linda, two of our Italian tour directors, and Lael Casas, our Vice President of Market, Innovation, and Development. And I would love for each of them to quickly uh, introduce themselves uh, to all of you. So Carla, would you like to go first? Of course, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited to be here with you. And uh, I can't wait to explain and to invite you to come to Northern Italy. Actually, I'm coming to you from home. I live in a little village in the province of Turin. I mean, in the Northwest of Italy. And I've been working for Go Ahead, uh, well, already 10 years. And I hope to continue to work with them. It's a fantastic family. Thank you so very much, Carla. And of course, we love having you part of our family and so grateful that you can join us here today uh, to be with us. Uh, up next, we have Linda. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yes, thank you, Josh. And thank you everyone for being here. My name is Linda and I am streaming from uh, Rome, Italy, although I am from Southern Italy and that's what I will be introducing to you today, Southern Italian Delights. Thank you so much, Linda. And I mean, that's how I would describe you, a Southern Italian delight. <laughs> <laughs> we love having you here. Thanks, Linda. And of course, uh, we have Lael here. So please, Lael, do you mind uh, introducing yourself? Yeah, thanks, Josh. Hi, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Lael Cassis, and I'm the VP of the Market Innovation and Development Team here at EFGO at Tours. My team is always on the lookout for interesting and immersive travel experiences. Our goal is to offer itineraries that will give you a sense of awe and provide a deeper understanding of the world while having fun. This is actually my third travel series uh, travel talk. So looking forward to being here with you today. So today I'm excited to be here to talk about our food and wine tours. One of my favorite activities while traveling is discovering the food, drink and local culinary specialties of a destination. Many of my favorite travel memories 
have an anchor around meals and cultural interactions involving food. Our food and wine tours have been designed with expertise, utilizing EF Go Ahead Tours worldwide network of tour directors and local suppliers to deliver meaningful, culturally enriching travel for those seeking authentic and local travel experiences. Each of our food and wine tours introduces you to the culture through its cuisine. Along the way, you'll learn about sustainable food production and meet local partners who promote the preservation of culinary traditions. Before we get into the rest of our food and wine travel talk, we'd like to show a quick video introducing this exciting travel style. Look at this. Can you believe this? This is so amazing. So I hope you got a small taste of what it's like to be on one of our food and wine tours from the video. Across cultures, people like to eat and drink, and there's no better way to bond with others than by sharing a glass of wine, taking a cooking class, or digging into a group meal on one of our food and wine tours. So let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, food and wine tour experience and the differentiators that make them so special. We'll start with smaller groups of, of fellow travelers. In addition to our safari and wildlife and adventure tours, Food and wine tours are included in our small groups portfolio, which have group sizes of 12 to 22 travelers per tour. Our small group tours allow travelers to dive deeper into a destination, to build deeper connections to each other, with their tour director, and also the communities they visit. The small group sizes on, on food and wine tours allow for more immersive and exclusive experiences that only work or are best experienced in a small group. Another benefit of running our food and wine tours with smaller groups is the opportunity to stay in remarkable properties located on farms, on vineyards, or hotels with beautiful views of the surrounding countryside. We select a variety of unique hotel properties, including boutique hotels and even agroturismos. An agroturismo is a hotel within a farm where the food served is mostly sourced directly from the property itself or the, or the local area. They pride themselves on the farm to table concept and you get to experience this firsthand. The guided sightseeing experience on our food and wine tours are done a little bit differently. You won't just visit iconic sites and get an introdu introduction to a city or town. You'll step out on foot and get to know local neighborhoods and parts of a city you wouldn't see otherwise. Our food and wine sightseeings always incorporate a tasting of a local specialty such as a sweet treat like Paisas de Nata which are egg custard pastries in Lisbon, or something even more savory like pinchos, which are boss style tapas in San Sebastian. On some of our food and wine tours, we offer food walking tours where the whole sightseeing is revolved around sampling local food specialties, visiting bustling neighborhood markets and meeting local people in the food industry. Some of these walking tours like in Kinsale, Ireland, offer so much food that you won't even need lunch. Wine, beer, and spirit tastings are another important component of our food and wine tours. You'll visit both famous and undiscovered wine regions to learn about different kinds of grapes and how wine is produced. Tastings usually include between three to five different types of wine and are experienced in various settings from vineyards, wine cellars, wine chateaus, and even restaurants. We provide a balance of visiting both traditional wineries 
and producers that are experimenting with new methods of making wine, like biodynamic and organic vineyards. We strive to give travelers a taste of both world-renowned wines that you may have known about and tasted at home, as well as lesser known wines that are, are highly enjoyed and only known by locals. We also include brewery visits and beer tastings, uh, distillery tours or liquor tastings in certain regions where beer or liquor is produced. To really understand the people and culture of a destination, you need to interact with local people. One of the best ways to do this on our food and wine tours is by meeting local food and drink producers. One of my favorites is the visits we include to city markets or weekly farmers markets, where you can meet artisan producers and taste their produce and craft. Whether it's meeting the, uh, the family of a dairy farmer in West Cork, Ireland, or visiting an oyster farm in Arcachon, France, or learning about olive oil um, and how it's produced from a connoisseur in Southern Spain, these tour tours provide a chance for endless interaction with locals. A traveler favorite on our food and wine tours are ha uh, the hands-on and interactive cooking classes we include on each itinerary. These cooking classes aren't just about cooking a full meal. They can also include a baking class in Paris where you learn to make classic French pastries and bread or even a cheese making course in Ireland. The meals and dining experience on our food and wine tours focus on seasonal and local specialties. They introduce the tastes and flavors of region and teach travelers about the traditions and stories behind the dishes served. You discover lots of hidden gems in our food and wine tours. We'll immerse you in destinations less visited and discovered. You'll visit countryside locations such as the Dur Douro Valley in Portugal small villages in Ireland like Dingle or the small village of Sarlat in the Dardogne region of France, or bring you to medium-sized cities like Cania in Crete and Bruges in Belgium. We wanna get you more off the beaten path to amazing locations which will wow and surprise you by their charm, beauty, and food. Wow, thank you very much, Lil. Uh, my inner foodie is coming out and I know one of my favorite things to do when I travel is immerse myself in the local culture as much as possible. Uh, so, you know, everything that you're saying is just like music to my ears. Um, but I know that our, our travelers out there are definitely gonna be interested. The first question that we'll get after this, of course, is, you know, where can they go? How can they experience some of these really incredible itineraries uh, on, or experiences on some of our, our itineraries? So could you talk a little bit more about, you know, what itineraries do we offer with the food and wine component? Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. So we currently offer 15 different food and wine tours that visit 12 different countries throughout South America and Europe. Uh, and I'd like to highlight a few of these different options available. We'll start with our food and wine tour in South America uh, that visits Chile and Argentina with a, an extension to the little country of Uruguay. This tour, this tour visits some amazing wine regions like Mendoza, where you get to taste Malbec wines. We also have a food and wine tour focused on some of the best beer regions of the world in Belgium and Germany. This tour has it all, including wine tastings in the Rhine Valley of Germany and an extension to the Czech Republic to Prague. We have a food and wine tour of Portugal. Uh, you discover this beautiful country by tasting olive oil and drinking wines in regions like Porto, the Douro Valley, and Al Alentejo. We have also a food and wine tour in Spain, which takes you to the famous coastal food city of San Sebastian, the Barcelona, and to the wine regions like La Rioja and Ribera del Duero. We also have a food and wine tour in Greece, which visits places like Thessaloniki in the north and all the way south to the island of Crete. We also recently launched a new food and wine tour in France that highlights two of the top wine regions in the world, which are Bordeaux and Burgundy. Another tour we recently launched is our new culinary tour of Ireland, which focuses less on wine and more on the beer, the liquor, and the rich network of farms that support the food heritage of the country. So those are some exciting itineraries I wanted to go over, but next our special guests, Linda and Carla, will talk in detail about all of our Italy food and wine tours and teach you about each region these tours visit. Great, thanks, Lel. But actually, before we, we do, we, we had a question come in. Uh, thank you, Debbie, for submitting your question. Uh, her question is for you here, Lael, and she asks, uh, would you recommend a food and wine tour even to someone who is not a wine drinker? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, our, our food and wine tours are, are not just about wine. Um, it's about so much more. So even if you're not a big wine drinker 
uh, or if you don't drink alcohol at all, I mean, you're still uh, very much enjoy the food, the destinations, you know, we do have alternatives. I also know people who actually like to taste the wine, but not actually drink it, uh, which is a method that, that some um, sommeliers go through with you. Uh, but we also have like some of our food and wine tours that focuses even less on wine. Um, for example, our, our itinerary in Ireland or our itinerary in Belgium and Germany that have a focus more on local food and beer and liquor um, and other food specialties. So even if you're not a big wine drinker, I highly recommend these itineraries because there's so much more to them and they really get you to off the beaten path locations and immerse you in local traditions and cultures. Fabulous, thank you so very much, Lail. Uh, now I'd like to actually hand it over. Uh, you set this up so nicely, Lail, for uh, Linda to take us to a journey through Southern Italy. So Linda, please take it away. Thank you, Josh. So here I come. I'm going to take you very briefly to southern Italy to show you everything we have to offer there. Let's start with this brand new food and wine tour that is called Campania, Puglia and the Amalfi Coast. We feature a Campania and the Amalfi Coast on many of our tours. Puglia is a brand new, newly designed tour, and uh, I'm going to highlight some of the best locations you'll be visiting during this journey. So let's start with the northern part of Puglia. That is is called Gargano. Gargano is very unexplored. To the Italians, it is actually very famous and it is one of the prime destinations for holiday because of its coastline, but also because of its diversity. This promontory on the Adriatic coast offers you the possibility to be in the middle of a forest feeling like you were on the Alps and by uh, the coastline where you can experience some of the most amazing sea experiences of the Mediterranean. Um, the Gargano coast has a lot of villages and some of these are extremely important for our culture. For example, the picture you see on the left hand side is a picture of the roofs of Monte Sant'Angelo. Monte Sant'Angelo has always been very famous to Europeans because this UNESCO town is actually the home of the Archangel Michael. This is the very first place where a shrine to the Archangel Michael uh, was actually built. On the right hand side instead, you see a very strange structure. Well, if you come to Gargano, you will see this along the coastline a lot. The coast of Gargano is very rough, high cliffs, and during the winters, it would be very difficult to fish. That's why they came up with this idea. They built trabucos. That's how they call the structures. They are actually fishing structures. They have been in existence forever. Actually, they go back to the ancient times. But today, they also cater food. So some people can go there and have a fishing experience along with uh, a great gourmet experience. And then moving on, uh, I would like to show you some of the specialties that you might find on the tables of Gargano. Uh, you would never think, but in Southern Italy, because of this special climate of Puglia and especially of Gargano promontory, we have truffles. As you can see on the left hand side, they are black truffles and the best ones are harvested in the summer. On the right hand side instead you see the strange thing. Uh, when you see them in person they look uh, like little onions uh, but they are not onions. They just peel off like onions. Uh, you would never eat them raw because they're really bitter but the women on the Gargano promontory are very skilled and since ancient times they actually pickle them and you will find them on all the local antipastes. Now if you come to Puya, of course you're going to be hearing a lot about the wines of Puya. Yeah. Puya has about 33 prime wines, so it'll be really endless to list them all. That's why we selected two of the most important products of Puya, Negro Amaro and Primitivo. Both of them are red grapes. Negro Amaro, it literally translates into black and bitter because that describes the color and a little bit of the aftertaste of this grape. It is a very hard skin and it suits perfectly the weather of Puya with those brutal summers uh, and uh, some kind of windy winters. Uh, this, this grape is very resistant, but you'll be surprised to know that you can taste this wine even with uh, a red tuna steak, so also with fish. The Primitivo is a little less 
it's, uh, um, it's a little less resistant. The skin is softer. It needs to be harvested quite early in the season, primitive. That's why we call it that way. Uh, we harvest it around the end of August. And this goes very well with cheese, for example. It is very simil similar to the, the, uh, the one you call Zinfandel. So it is actually one of the preferred wines of our visitors. Uh, but uh, let's move on to, to discover a little bit more about Puglia. It is a long region. It is the heel of the boot. So we'll have to go all the way to the very end. And that is called Salento. Salento is that peninsula that really goes into the Ionian Sea and almost touches the first Greek island. Uh, Salento is the land of sun. It is the land of sea. And it is the land of wind. These are the three main elements of the Salento region. It is small villages with amazing old traditions. Let me show you some pictures of things you will see. For example, here there is the coastline of Salento. It gives you a sense of what it is like, but when you're there in person, it really feels almost Greek and in a certain way Moorish, because of course we had a Moorish domination. On the right hand side, you see the splendid cathedral of Otranto, one of the most beautiful towns, coastal towns of Salento with its uh, turquoise waters and it's exactly almost at the point where the Adriatic, the Adriatic Sea kisses the, Adri the, the, the Ionian Sea and uh, the landscape gets superb. Let's move on to see some more pictures of Salento. Yes, the typical products. Uh, left hand side, frisella. It is no more than a rusk that we dress with olive oil, with fresh tomatoes. And here you see them with cheese and with olives. You'll find them also on the breakfast tables. But if you are more on a dessert side, you want to try the main pastry of lecce, the leccese cake. It's called pasticciotto inside custard with sour cherries, amazing. And then on the right hand side, rosé, because I know now some of those uh, wine experts will say, really, rosé? Yes, this is one of the regions of the world where rosé is an amazing wine. And it is mainly made with Primitivo grapes or with Negro Amaro grapes. But let's move forward because Puglia is a really amazing experience and so diverse. If you come to the center of the region, you will be in the area that we nicknamed the Truly Region. It is the province of Bari. Bari is actually the capital city of Puglia. And this land is all about the grains and the way they break this amazing bread that it is the most famous of southern Italy, the Altamura bread. When you come to the Truly region, the highlight is definitely that little village that you see there on the left hand side, Albero Bello. I know it is terrible to pronounce. So you can simply call it the village of Truly or the fairy tale village because that's how it feels. And on the right hand side, you can see the amazing basilica of the city of Bari dedicated to. San Nicola, because you probably don't know that Santa Claus is in Italy. The resting place is exactly in the city of Bari. This church is, uh, is important both, both for the Catholic and the Orthodox. It's one of the very few places in the world where we celebrate mass according to two different religions. Uh, let's see a little bit more of what to discover. Uh, when you walk around the streets of Albero Bello, and you will definitely do that with your local guide, it's not simply about seeing all the this amazing architecture, this, uh, this old dwellings. Uh, they used to be simple and poor dwellings for peasants, uh, but nowadays some of them have become luxurious hotels. Uh, it is also about tasting the food. So you get hungry, you just walk in one of the local bakeries and you get a pucha. Pucha is this little bun. It is uh, very soft, less crusty in the outside and more soft in the inside. And in there we put, uh, you can put everything you want. I'll tell you how we like it. In Albero Bello, you will commonly find it with capo collo. That is uh, a cold cut uh, from uh, the town of Francavilla. And now uh, we are going to uh, 
take a guess here. The two main products uh, of Southern Italy. Everyone coming to Southern Italy knows about mozzarella. You go to Campania and mozzarella is the protagonist in every table. It is on the pizza, it is in the antipastos, the famous caprese salad, and the most important mozzarella is the one that is there on the right hand side, the water buffalo mozzarella. Uh, but then when you go to Puglia, you discover there is another type of mozzarella. It's not exactly mozzarella, it's mozzarella with a surprise. It is a mozzarella, you, 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 mozzarella, you cut into it and it reveals a soft heart of butter. Now, my favorite, I, I don't know, it is very hard to pick. Um, I'll go with both. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. It's, it's actually interesting that you say this because when we were putting this presentation together and we were talking, uh, the tour directors, Lael and I, uh, it was quite a bit of a um, disagreement on which one of these are better, the burrata or the buffalo mozzarella. And so we actually want to ask all of you out there, uh, if you've tried both of these incredible cheeses, uh, which one do you prefer? Uh, we'll be pulling up a poll here in a bit, so you can actually uh, put in the poll uh, which one you prefer, either the burrata or the buffalo mozzarella. Uh, if you don't see it, you can click, there's a button there that says poll on your screen, click that and you can uh, see the poll appear. If you're joining us on Facebook, the poll unfortunately won't appear for you, but what you can do is just type into the comment section below which you prefer, the burrata or the buffalo mozzarella. I'm gonna give it a, a few minutes here so everyone can get their, their choices in. And looking at it, it is neck and neck, wow. Didn't realize we were going to have uh, such a competition here, Linda. This is fantastic. Yeah. All right. It looks like we're going to stop the uh, the poll here with a slight favor for the burrata, which um, honestly, I'm with all of you out there. Uh, the burrata is such a creamy, delicious uh, delight to have. Uh, but it, I mean, I'm not going to also uh, turn away a waiter that has that beautiful plate of buffalo mozzarella. So uh, thank you all very much uh, for, for taking part of that poll. Absolutely, Josh. So how about that? We'll take mozzarella for lunch and we'll go for burrata for dinner. So we don't have to choose. But now let's move over uh, because Italy is uh, an incredibly large area to, to visit. And this, uh, this area uh, is possible to visit thanks to our other tour, uh, Southern Italy and Sicily. This tour is amazing and it covers a really, really large part of, of, this, uh, uh, of this part of the peninsula. It starts in Sicily and it starts in a very special place of Sicily. We chose to start in the city of Catania because we do consider Catania a foodie capital of Sicily. Now I know that those of you out there who have been to Palermo will disagree and say, but Palermo was amazing food and you're right. I mean, you can't go wrong in Sicily. But Catania is more unknown. And to keep the trend of showing you the hidden gems of, uh, uh, of this country, we chose to start in Catania. In Catania, we have an amazing experience. We take you to the local market. Why do we do so? Because we are all about showing you how people actually live. And part of their way of living is the way they shop. In Catania, going to, the, to a supermarket is, of course, possible. But people mostly go to the local market that is called La Pescheria, a large market, old style market, one of the very few left uh, in Italy, where you can choose uh, from fish to meats to vegetables, anything. We always take a walk with it. We learn about all the amazing fish that you can actually uh, find around the Mediterranean, but we also taste some of the local produce like this wonderful olives. The Sicilians are the only ones who know how to dress their olives with plenty of condiments. This ones are with chili, but you find them with pickled carrots and pickled celery. They're just amazing as a snack as you go along the market and explore more. Let me show you one more picture of the market uh, so that you can get a sense of what happens there. This is the type of dynamic you have to expect on a tour like this. People, they all stop around and they start asking and they start learning the names of the different fish in Italian and then they get amazed at the price. Everybody comes back to me and says, oh my God, the prices are so inexpensive. Of course, they're not inexpensive to us, but I would say that it is a fair price. That tells you that it is an important part of our diet. Fish is an important part of our diet, especially in Southern Italy. We call it the Mediterranean diet after all. 
after you complete your experience in Sicily, you have to touch the mainland, the Italian mainland. And on this tour, you will do it in the perfect way, the way it was always done, by crossing the famous Strait of Messina. It is a very short crossing, but it is absolutely scenic. And once you are on the other side, you will be, uh, from the city of Messina, you'll be touching ground in the city of Reggio Calabria. And in Reggio Calabria, we take you to, to we take you to a museum to show you these two amazing bronze statues. Imagine they were found by accident by an, Amer by, by an Italian doctor from Rome who was on holiday in a little village near Reggio Calabria and he found this under the water. Now these two amazing bronze statues are today considered the best example of Greek, ancient Greek bronze statues still in existence. But uh, we explore more of Calabria. We take you to what is considered to be the pearl of southern Italy, the town of Tropea. Actually, just yesterday, this town was elected here in Italy, the best town 2021, the most beautiful town for 2021. Here you see the sanctuary on a little island on the coast, and then you see the beautiful uh, the beautiful alleys, uh, where you find plenty of food stores, uh, where you can try the red onions from Tropea, and you can also try any type of food, but always with the main ingredient of Calabrian uh, cuisine, chili pepper. Yeah, you have to like it hot up there because it's uh, the food can be quite spicy. But then moving over, uh, we're going to go up to the city of Matera. Matera is in, the, is, is in the region called Basilicata, and this was the European capital of culture 2019. Matera has become extremely famous in the last few years. Imagine that in 1950, this was the shame of Italy, because in those cave dwellings uh, that date back to very ancient times, uh, people were still living in very poor hygienic conditions in 1950 until they cleared the area but nowadays people are going back to these dwellings that look like luxurious residences bed and breakfasts and hotels Matera is a beautiful place to discover Mel Gibson chose this place for the movie The Passion of Christ and it is chosen by many directors all over Europe uh, and after Matera we're going to take a journey again up north and we come to another area of southern Italy. It is about an hour north of Naples. It is the province of Benevento. It is the wine country of Campania region. This place can be any different than, than uh, Naples. Uh, why is that? Naples is chaotic and is uh, colorful and this place is just peaceful and people just come here to relax uh, and drink lots of wine. In front of you, there is uh, a vineyard of a Iannico grape. Uh, this is the most famous red grape of this area. Look at the beautiful colors during the fall. So if you decide to come during the fall, you will amaze that you will be amazed by the incredible foliage. Uh, Benevento is also a beautiful little city. Uh, in the next slide, you're going to see the Trajan Arch. Emperor Trajan built here in this, in what is nowadays just a small provincial city. He built this arch that is considered nowadays the best preserved in existence in the ancient Roman world. And then on the right hand side, uh, just another picture of, the, of a vineyard, the Sangiovese grape. In this case, uh, just to tell you that in here, in this area, you will be experiencing the rural soul of Southern Italy, but you will also be doing something very special like cooking with a Michelin star chef who will tell you how he learned to cook from the traditional dishes of his mother. Well, Southern Italy is much more than this, of course. We tried to give you a little bit just in a few minutes, and we expect you over here to show you more. Thank you so very much, Linda. That was absolutely incredible. You transported us directly to Southern Italy, uh, and, uh, well, absolutely fantastic. Thank you so very much. Uh, but now, if you all will uh, indulge me a bit, we are going to take a short uh, trip up to the northern part of Italy, where Carla will be able to explain the splendor of her backyard and talk to us all about the incredible culinary experiences that we'll be able to have on our northern Italian food and wine tour. So Carla, do you mind taking it away, please? Yes, of course. Uh, welcome to northern Italy. So 
Uh, it's of course a very, very different from the Southern Italy. First of all, for the climate, the weather here is a little bit chillier than uh, in the Southern Italy, but uh, indeed uh, these tours, uh, Northern Italy, the Italian Riviera food and wine covers uh, four regions, uh, four Northern Italian regions. So the first one is Piedmont. The second one is Liguria. Then it comes uh, Emilia Romagna. And finally, the Veneto region, the region of Venice. Well, uh, the tour starts uh, in Torino, Turin and English. Look at this beautiful picture. It had been uh, taken from a hill and uh, that is a marvelous view on the Alps. Uh, those are the Alps, Linda, with snow, highest peak than in the Southern Italy, of course. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this is a large, a big city, but until today, it's pretty much unknown. It is uh, considered uh, um, a late touristic city because it became a more touristic just uh, with the 20th Olympic Winter Games in 2006. And that's the reason why when our guest comes to Torino, they are pretty much surprised for uh, uh, the authenticity of the city, the authenticity of the local people. For example, we don't have a restaurant for tourists and a restaurant for locals. We can go everywhere and we find local people. Here on the left hand side, you see a church. That church is located on the top of the hill from which there is that wonderful panorama. And that's called Santa Maria del Monte. Meanwhile, on your right hand side, you see our royal palace. Because might, you might not know that Turin had been the first capital of Italy. So uh, we gave the king of Torino to all the Italians. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm talking about uh, the Savoy family, the dynasty that ruled the country for more than 400 years. And uh, the Royal Palace of Torino is just uh, one of the many royal residences of Savoy. Um, uh, for example, here you see another one that is called Palazzo Madama. It uh, started being uh, uh, just a simple Roman gate. Then it had been turned into a medieval castle, later on in a Baroque residence. And uh, in 1861, finally, the first Senate of Italy. And of course, uh, Palazzo Madama is located in the heart of Turin, that is Castle Square. And uh, as you can see, it became just pedestrian some years ago. Um, the city of Turin offers more than buildings, palaces, monuments, villas, and so on. It offers, for example, this wonderful drink that is called Bichering. Bichering is a dialect name. It means a little glass. And uh, that is uh, the Turinese drink for excellence. Why? Because it can just be drank here in town, not outside of the city. And it's made up with coffee, dark chocolate and cream. And of course, uh, is, um, how can I say, is a strong, um, super caloric drink. And being Turin located close to the Alps, you can imagine that uh, it's the perfect drink for winter. But uh, more than that, Turin is the capital of chocolate. You might be not uh, um, know that Turin was the first town in Europe that imported uh, cocoa beans uh, from Central America. And that dates back uh, to the 16th century. After that, we started to produce solid chocolate that happened at the very beginning of 1800. And later on, we discovered a special new taste. That is the janduja. Janduja is a, a blend between chocolate and hazelnuts. Um, for political reasons, uh, it happened that uh, we got a lack of chocolate and Italian Turinese producers decided to replace uh, uh, cocoa butter with hazelnut oil. This new taste um, uh, was called janduja um, because of our carnival mask. 
which names is of course uh, Janduya. And what you see in the picture, you not know, just the hazelnut, but that uh, small wrapped chocolate with golden paper, that is Gianduiotto. Gianduiotto is exactly the most famous chocolate of Turin. Um, further on, we move uh, to a very famous brand, that is Nutella. And on the right hand side, you see another brand that is Caffarel. Well, the difference is that Nutella is also Piedmontese because uh, it had been created in Albert, but 100 years later than the real cream of Gianduia, which was uh, the first uh, taste of, uh, uh, I mean, chocolate, uh, cream chocolate. So you can try both, of course, in Torino, and uh, I'm sure you will appreciate more the traditional cream of Gianduia because that is artisanal. And until today, we produce it. Uh, oh, voila. And now we move to the Southern Piedmont uh, and we get to the Lange region. What does it mean, Lange? Lange comes from lingua. In Italian, it means a tongue. And in fact, that is due to the shape of those hills. Altogether, they look like many, many tongues uh, connected together. This is our best uh, um, wine uh, area. And of course, is exactly the place where the um, wine of the king and the king of the wine is produced. That is the Barolo. And uh, all the area, is uh, full of castles, uh, tower, fortresses uh, uh, on the top of the hills. And here on the left hand side, you have a great example. That is the castle of Grinzane. And uh, you guess, uh, in, we can go inside with this tour and people will appreciate not just the landscape all around, but also the architecture from the middle age to nowadays. That is a master of the region, as well as, of course, uh, our, our, another important product, which is uh, the truffle, the white truffle. Nothing to do with the black truffle, please. Those ones cost 10 times more than a black truffle. And uh, of course, there is a reason. Black truffles can just be found in this area, the Lange area. And of course, just for a short period of the year, usually in autumn, uh, between uh, October, November, uh, very beginning of December, until the snow comes. And of course, how do we find travel? Thanks to the dogs and the travel hunters. Here on the left hand side, I recognize Natale. Natale is a local, is a peasant that has a special deal with travels, but he kept the secrets from his father, from his grandfather. And uh, that is the way from generation to generation, uh, information, secrets about uh, finding travels are given and uh, of course are used. Here we see two beautiful dogs. Dogs uh, and travel hunters have a special bond. Of course, uh, it is made by sickness, by looking, uh, there is uh, a sort of feeling which makes uh, a sort of one thing uh, during the hunting. And the hunting is always made uh, at night, uh, during night. Uh, for hours and hours, uh, travel hunters uh, goes up and down uh, on the hills uh, and uh, in, the, in the silence of the night, in the darkness. Uh, but indeed, uh, it's something special that just local can do. Well, and here we come to Barolo. What's Barolo? Barolo is not just uh, uh, the wine. In fact, it's the village as well, because uh, the Barolo wine has been uh, created, I can say, uh, thanks to a young lady. She's uh, Juliette Colbert, the nice young lady that you see on your left hand side. She's French, she was French. She came from France to marry the Marquise of Barolo. And thanks to her, 
uh, she imported the uh, uh, French uh, uh, knowledge about wine. So she improved, of course, uh, the uh, production of Barolo, but especially she branded it, uh, giving the name of the village where she lived with his husband and uh, making the first marketing of this great wine, which uh, became the, the wine of the king. And uh, of course, uh, so much appreciated from the ancient times until nowadays. Moving on, we reach another region that is Liguria. Liguria is a, a half moon shape region and it's a pearl. Uh, imagine then that from Turin to reach Liguria, it just takes one hour and a half. So we are pretty much closed. And what we offer during the tour is a fantastic board ride to reach the Cinque Terre, the five cleft villages, which are part of the maritime park of the Cinque Terre. And we are able to get out to visit two of them and to experience also some food. For example, uh, the focaccia di Recco or uh, another specialities of Liguria is certainly the pisto that you know so much in the States. Uh, from Liguria, we move uh, to another region. This is a fantastic Emilia Romagna. And one specialty is exactly the traditional balsamic vinegar. Nothing to do with that balsamic vinegar that, that you find at the supermarket. Really nothing to do. This is something else. This is made up uh, in uh, uh, small um, faci facilities. And of course, uh, with our tour, we are able to experience directly in an ancient uh, 1800 villas uh, where the, this uh, traditional balsamic vin vinegar is produced. And uh, uh, where is aged especially? Because it's not in a cellar, in a normal cellar. The cellar is uh, under the roof. So uh, it's a, a room where there is a special climate that permits uh, uh, to the uh, balsamic vinegar to be aged in a proper way. Uh, after these uh, fantastic uh, products, uh, we uh, arrive uh, to uh, the most known Italian product, product in the world, probably, that is the Parmesan, but it's not enough to say Parmesan, we have to say Parmigiano Reggiano. And the Parmesan comes uh, from a CD name that is Parma. And in fact, in Emilia Romagna, exactly the area of the city of Parma is uh, the place where this Parmesan is produced and aged. And with our tour, we make the experience to get into a factory, to get into the facility where the Parma Parmesan is made and then where it is aged. After that, of course, it comes the best part of the visit, which is the tasting. Finally, we reach Bologna. Bologna is the capital town of Emilia Romagna. And Bologna is, of course, uh, uh, characterized by three adjectives, the learned, uh, the red, and the fat. The learned, just because it owns the oldest university of the world, um, the red, because Bologna is uh, made by bricks, and finally the fat. Bologna is considered the capital town of the Italian cuisine. So many dishes that you experience at home, such as lasagne, tagliatelle, tortellini, uh, mortadella, well, they originate in Bologna. And uh, thanks to a fantastic optional, uh, you are gonna put your hands in the dough. Why? Because we have a beautiful cooking class uh, outside Bologna in the countryside. We are hosted by uh, a, a family. This is a, a familiar restaurant where people are, uh, are learned uh, to create uh, uh, tortellini and tagliatelle. And normally when I lead this tour, I always ask to, get, to make a good job 
because for dinner, they are gonna eat exactly what they prepare. And then of course, so we have this beautiful local market in Bologna. Well, in Bologna, we have honestly a great, great city tour. Uh, with our guide, local guide, we experience uh, uh, that uh, um, university, a section of that university, which is uh, the anatomic uh, theater. So the first uh, anatomy classroom in the world. And after that, at the end of the visit, we deep into the local market, which is located in the city center of Bologna, making a, a real intrusion to discover all the products they are displayed as you see here in the picture. And you can find everything, vegetable, fruits, meat, cold cuts, uh, fish, everything that enjoy your palate. And that is the perfect time because it will be lunch time. That's the reason why people will have free time after the explanation of the different products to buy, to consume, to decide what they are gonna eat in that specific moment. Thank you so very much, Carla. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, I don't know, you know what I'm gonna choose next for my next tour, either Northern Italy or Southern Italy, um, but uh, I, I can't decide. Um, either way, I'm gonna come for dinner for both you, uh, Carla and Linda's house. So be ready for me next time I'm in town. Um, Great, so now we are going to move on to our uh, question and answer section. Um, and uh, thanks for those of you who have submitted questions already. If you still have more questions, uh, please feel free to use that uh, Q&A box, uh, or if you're joining us on Facebook in that comment section below. Uh, the first question that came through today uh, is from John. Uh, thank you, John. He writes, my sister is vegan. Uh, can these tours accommodate accommodate her preference or her dietary preferences? Uh, and I'm actually going to send this to Linda. Can you answer that for us? Yes, actually, yes. We can accommodate all kinds of requests uh, as far as they come to us in a timely manner. So please talk to your consultant and also check with your tour director upon arrival because uh, we're always working with our suppliers to make sure that everybody is comfortable for every meal. Um, so it is really important that you communicate this. Yeah. Thanks, Linda. And I know from my experience on tour as well, uh, even those with celiac or have a gluten-free diet, um, even gluten-free pasta in Italy is, is available. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Linda. And thanks, John, for asking that question. Uh, the next question is coming from Carla. Carla would like to know, uh, when is the best time to visit Italy for one of these food and wine tours? Uh, I'm going to pass that over to Carla. Okay, well, I, I can say that uh, uh, they can come every time of the year, but indeed, uh, specifically for the southern Italy, during July and August, uh, it's better to skip it, if it's possible, because temperatures are pretty much high. So in that case, I invite uh, uh, the guests to come to the northern Italy, which is a little <laughs> bit less, uh, less uh, hot. But uh, you can also choose to come during winter time. Uh, it is, of course, uh, colder, but indeed uh, uh, it's less crowded uh, everywhere in the north, in the central Italy and the southern Italy. So please, uh, um, spring, uh, um, summer, autumn, and also winter, any time is good. Thank you, Carla. Uh, wonderful. And uh, this question, next question is going to be for you, Lael. Uh, and this is coming from Larry. Uh, Larry would like to know, do we offer a truffle hunt experience, uh, much like Carla uh, was describing on one of our tours? Yeah, great question, Larry. Uh, so I personally love truffles. Uh, if, if any of you haven't had truffles, I highly recommend trying any dishes of truffles because they're absolutely delicious. Uh, but we do offer truffle hunts on a couple of our itineraries, actually. So starting on our 2022 itinerary in northern Italy, uh, we are actually including a truffle hunt outside of Alba uh, in Piedmont with a hunter and his dog, uh, where you learn about truffles, how they grow, you get to sample them and hopefully even find some. Uh, so as Carla, Carla mentioned, it is seasonal. Um, but there's other ways to find truffles in other different seasons and also still learn and taste about them. Um, so that's a great tour to, to go on to experience that. 
We also actually have an, an amazing partnership with America's Test Kitchen as well, where we um, actually put together an itinerary with them. And that also includes actually a visit to the Alba Truffle Festival, which happens every, uh, every fall in, in October uh, into November. And that's actually even a better place to, um, to taste all types of different truffles and go on a hunt. Um, they do a big auction every year. I think truffles are actually even more expensive than the price of gold at this point uh, and continuing to rise. So um, it's a very coveted item for sure. Wonderful, thanks. Thanks, Lil. Uh, and again, thanks, Larry, for that question. Uh, we have another question. This one's coming uh, from, uh, this one is coming from Michael. And uh, I'm gonna pr propose this to you, Linda, because uh, Michael asks uh, that their July Southern Italy tour has that meal that you were talking about with the Michelin star restaurant, uh, the Michelin star chef. Uh, is there a dress code for that type of restaurant or what would you recommend someone bring for that? No, there is no dress code. Uh, in reality, the type of experience we're doing, it, it's going to be uh, a very, it's, it's going to be an immersive experience, but don't expect like a, a luxurious experience. It is going to be um, amazing because you're actually talking to someone who is uh, dedicated to high-end cuisine, uh, but it's going to bring to you the sense of how everything originates uh, from the roots. So this person is bringing his food culture Culture into his uh, vision of creative modern cuisine. So there is no dress code. There is just uh, the idea is just uh, that of being with his family for a day and with his team for a day. Fabulous. No jacket required, but a positive attitude. I love that. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, this next question is, I'm going to post to you, Lail. Uh, this uh, question comes from Facebook, actually. Uh, and uh, it is, I'm going to uh, tour uh, as a solo traveler. Will I be safe on that tour? Yeah, well, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we, we cater all of our itineraries to solo travelers. Um, so, you know, you're often meet other fellow solo travelers on our itineraries. Um, and our food and wine tours are, are a great place to travel um, as, as a solo traveler. Um, you know, A, because we have the structure of the itinerary um, and you're traveling with, you know, your tour director, meeting locals. Um, and then we also actually have a set of solo only tours as well, if you're interested in not doing a food and wine tour, but one of our other itineraries. And these are actually completely designed where everyone traveling uh, is a solo traveler. Um, and so that, that's another great option. Uh, but I, I highly recommend you look at our website. We actually now have a solo only uh, website page that really talks about all the different options you have as a solo traveler. Great, uh, thank you very much, Alail. Uh, so another question that we have uh, coming in here is uh, to Carla, actually, this is back back to that truffle hunt because uh, everyone's so interested in those truffles. Uh, it, it, uh, the, this person is asking, I was wondering why uh, that truffle hunt is at night. Uh, why is it that they traditionally hunt at night? Yes, of course, there are different reasons. Uh, uh, mainly during nights, uh, there is no noise at all. So uh, the dog can uh, uh, feel better, uh, the smell, and he's quieter. Uh, then there is another reason, which is uh, probably the most important one for the locals. Uh, they need to keep uh, the place secret because uh, um, they are jealous. Um, even though they are, I don't know, two friends, uh, two travel hunter, they don't talk each other about the places. They trick each other. So they try really to skip uh, all the details. Uh, they determine uh, exactly the speech when they go on uh, the travel, because uh, that is a sort of a secret that comes from generation to generation, but it has to be inside the family, not outside. Thank you so much, Carla. That reminds me of uh, my home uh, state of Minnesota. We do that with fishing. You know, we keep our fishing uh, holes secret. So if someone drives by in the boat, we say, no, that's good fishing over there. So they, they don't come <laughs> exactly. to us at, at our spot. Exactly uh, the same. <laughs> fantastic. All right. Well, thank you all uh, very much. Uh, before we go, though, I do have a few more things to, to mention. Um, if you have been on our food and wine tours before and you've done all of our food and wine Italy tours, 
we do still have other uh, different travel styles for you that might pique your interest. So we have tours from that range from our classic tours, such as our Grand Tour of Italy or our Venice, Florence and Rome tours. We have adventure tours, such as walking tours and different things that are a little bit more active to our solo tours, like Lael has mentioned. Um, for those of you who enjoy traveling solo, but never alone, uh, can join us on one of those uh, solo tours. We have special event tours, such as like a New Year's Eve in Rome, or even uh, a private and customized tour. So if you're looking at our, our uh, itineraries and there's uh, something more that you'd like to do or see and kind of take the itinerary and make it your own, uh, bring a, a group of friends with you and you can uh, take a private or customized tour with us. Uh, we'd love to talk to you more about that. Again, if you loved this uh, this presentation as much as I did here, please tell your friends. You can share it on Facebook um, or you can come to one of our upcoming travel talks as well. So uh, next, or sorry, April 20th on Tuesday, we have a destination spotlight, uh, which is gonna highlight our uh, Costa Rica and what different uh, uh, highlights you have in that country. We have our uh, virtual escape ancient Egypt on Tuesday, April 27th, where you can come join an Egyptologist to learn more about uh, the history and splendor of ancient Egypt. And then on Tuesday, March 11th, we have our Scotland destination spotlight talking about the castles, whiskey, and traditions with two of our incredible uh, Scottish tour directors. Uh, so thank you all very, very much for attending and taking the time with us. Thank you to uh, Linda, Carla, and Lael for joining us today. Uh, see you all again very soon. But until then, be safe. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.